Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about ligase chain reaction. You probably heard uh, the basic type of chain reaction process that is polymerase chain reaction or PCR where you use a TAC polymerase, a specific type of polymerase enzyme derived from Thermus aquaticus bacteria. Uh, because it's thermostable, we use that to amplify the number of DNA fragments uh, in a thermocycler machine. Uh, in thermocycler machine temperature uh, changes happen all the time. Now uh, in ligase chain reaction is slightly different than the PCR, the conventional way of amplifying DNA fragments. Now in, uh, in LCR what we do, we use four synthetic oligonucleotide probes where in PCR we use two primers, two different probes, these are called primers one forward primer, another one reverse primer uh, to finally amplify the required DNA segment. But in LCR or ligase chain reaction, we use four oligonucleotide DNA probe and we use this probe to amplify the segment of DNA that we want to amplify and this amplification is very, very rapid and very accurate, even more accurate than PCR theoretically, right? Why? In a minute we will discuss. In this case, each pair of the probes hybridized to close a region of the target DNA template, right? And then once they are at very close proximity of the target DNA segment, then the gap that is there is filled by the DNA polymerase and then DNA ligase will seal their nick. So in this case, we use DNA polymerase as well as DNA ligase enzyme to finally recreate the strand that we want to amplify, right? Now in this case, it's a two-step process. First is uh, closing the gap between the annealed uh, probe and then finally sealing the nick using ligase. As it is a two-step process, it is much more convenient and it's very, very important process uh, compared with PCR and it's very, very specific theoretically compared with PCR. So say uh, this is the ligase chain reaction scheme where you see that uh, this is the target DNA we want to amplify. You know, target DNA contains uh, different, it's a long DNA segment for example, uh, but say this is the segment that we want to amplify, segment A to B, this is the part we want to amplify. Then what will we do? And now here we denature it uh, at the temperature of 94 degrees Celsius, it is uh, separated, then we cool it down to 40 to 60 degrees Celsius so that the annealing uh, is possible. So we add uh, the probe, the oligonucleotide probes, four probes are required. So probe 1, probe 2, probe 3 and probe 4, they are added and they are complementary with the strand that we want to amplify. So as they are complementary, they will pair with the DNA segment. Once they are paired, then you see there is a gap between each of those uh, two probes. Now those gaps are filled by thermostable uh, polymerase and thermostable ligase enzymes. Actually ligase cannot fill a gap, so we need a DNA polymerase to fill the gap. DNA polymerase will fill this gap between and whenever nick is left, that nick is ligated with a ligase enzyme and that ligase enzyme is also thermostable because we are doing this uh, all these processes at at least 40 to 50 degrees Celsius temperature. So obviously those ligase enzyme and the DNA polymerase uh, should have the ability to survive at that high temperature. So once the ligation is done properly, see the ligation is done, then what we get? We get uh, two, uh, we get exact replica of our target DNA, right? So once we get this replica, then what will happen? Now each of the short segment, the exact DNA segment that we want to replicate in the, in the next round, those will be the target DNA. See, these will be the target DNA, target DNA 1, target DNA 2 and the other two will also be there but now what will you do? We add four on oligonucleotide probe again close to the target DNA again filling the gap, sealing the nick with ligase and finally we get the copy. So now after two rounds what we get? We get two complete accurate segment of target DNA in our hand. The more cycle we go on, the more number of target DNA we will generate and we will produce over the time. That is the beauty of ligase chain reaction. As you know, this ligase chain reaction is very similar uh, with the polymerase chain reaction. In polymerase chain reaction, we use only one 
type of polymerase that is TAC polymerase. But in ligase chain reaction, we are using a polymerase enzyme, a ligase enzyme, and both are thermostable type of enzymes. So once you produce that, you know, after 30 to 45 cycles, we need 30 to 45 cycles in total. So after this 30 to 45 cycles in total, we have a 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 11 fold amplification, 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 11 times amplification of the uh, DNA fragments. Uh, once a lot of DNA will be produced, we can take that DNA and do a lot of stuffs like AFLP, RFLP, RFD, multiple stuffs are possible and those things are there, right? So this is about the ligase chain reaction and similar with PCR, but there are some uh, advantages of ligase chain reaction because it's much more accurate. You know, in PCR, uh, the primer design is difficult. It can bind with somewhere else. The amplification will not be that much specific. That is uh, in case of uh, LCR. So that's the beauty of LCR. I hope you understand this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel. Thank you.